Hello, welcome to Telugu One Academy. So, in today's class in AP Geography, uh, we are going to look into the district of Vijayanagaram, the district's profiles of Andhra Pradesh. So, district of uh, Vijayanagaram. So, when it is formed, what are the important places in Vijayanagaram, tourism spots, uh, next important personalities or uh, population wise, it stands in which, uh, which position in overall AP. So, uh, Vijayanagaram district was carved out of Vizag district. Uh, district headquarters of Vijayanagaram district is Vijayanagaram city itself. On the name of Vijayanagaram city only, district headquarters have been established. Uh, this is actually the, it's the northeastern part of Andhra Pradesh, northeastern part of Andhra Pradesh. So, Vijayanagaram district was formed on June, 1st June 1979 with some parts carved from the neighboring district of Shrikakulam and Vishakhapatnam. Shrikakulam was also under Vishakhapatnam district and some parts have been uh, taken from Shrikakulam, Vijan, uh, Shrikakulam uh, district and again these parts are given back to Vijayanagaram district after formation like Saluru, Bobbili, Gajapatinagaram have been given back by Shrikakulam after formation of Vijayanagaram district. So at present Vijayanagaram district is the largest municipality uh, because population is very less so obviously it is the largest municipality. In terms of population, the land inhabited by the high spirited Rajas, Vijayanagaram was named after the Ra Maharajas of Vijayanagaram. Uh, they called as Pusapati Maharajas. So, Vijayanagaram was named after the rulers of Pusapati dynasty. Pusapati dynasty. So, Vijayanagaram is a place of art and culture. It's not only a place of like uh, Maharajas, but it is a place of art and culture. Like so many poets, so many uh, musicians, so many uh, other art forms like writers, literary people have been born in this district of Vijayanagaram. So the land inhabited by high spirited Rajas, passionate poets and writers is not a stone which is everywhere. So it acquired a separate statehood in the year 1970. Nine in 1979. And the Kalalaki Raja and the Vijayanagara and the Kalalaki Raja and the Akadani Rakala Kalalu, Kalakarlu, Vijayanagara and the Manki Dorkar. If you're coming to the history of Vijayanagaram, the Raja Sahib Dr. PVG Raju, who inherits a socialist, PVG Raju, that Pusapati Maharaju, who is uh, father of like great uh, grandfather of Ashoka, the present Ashoka Gajapati Raju. So the Raja Sahib, Dr. P. V. G. Raju, who, who inherits the socialist fervor and the spirit of religious tolerance from his ancestors, he renounced his Jamindari. He said like he is a follower of socialism. He said, no, I doesn't want to continue this uh, legacy of Jamindar. I re I'll renounce this Jamindari system. And he renounced and started living like a common man. He started living like a common man. Without taking any comp uh, compensation and their fort is now entirely become the citadel of education which houses on the oldest colleges that is called Maharaja College 1879 in India. And what he have done is he uh, donated his fort, he donated his fort for, for the nation or the, for the development of the state. Now that fort, uh, in that uh, fort of Mr. Maharaja Dr. P. V. G. Raju, Maharaja College has been established That's a, in 1817. That is a, one of the oldest fort colleges in India. Oldest fort colleges in India that is Maharaja College. The district is named after the princely state of Vijayanagaram. Already we have seen Vijayanagaram being a princely state. So the district, the total district has been named after princely state of Vijayanagaram. Even the headquarters also Vijayanagaram only. So, it is the least populous city, so biggest municipality. Being the least populous uh, city, so this is the biggest municipality. Next, coming to geographical profile. This is the history of Vijayanagaram. How it is formed, 
who are the ancestral uh, uh, Jamindaris of this Vijayanagaram. Now coming to the geographical profile like boundaries, rivers, other features of the landforms. So Vijayanagaram district was formed as 23rd district, which how much? 23rd district. As 23rd district in the state on 1st June 1979 with headquarters at Vijayanagaram. Why it is called as 23rd state? Because that was erstwhile Andhra Pradesh, undivided Andhra Pradesh. 1979 means it was undivided Andhra Pradesh. So 23rd district. Headquarters with headquarters as Vijayanagaram itself. So the district is a part of northern coastal plains. If you see. The map of AP. This is the Vijayanagaram district. This is. So it comes under the northern coastal plains of Andhra Pradesh. So uh, it has been it has boundaries with in northern side Shrikakulam, east bounded on the east Shrikakulam, west and south Vishakapatnam and south Bay of Bengal. So east this is Vijayanagaram district. It has been bounded in the east by Shrikakulam, west and south by Vishakapatnam and South, Bay of Bengal and West, Odisha. South is Bay of Bengal. So the district has how many talukas? It has 9 talukas. How many? 9 talukas like Vijayanagaram, Gajapati Nagaram, Shrungavarapu Kota that is called Eskota or Bhogapuram uh, from talukas from Vishakapatan district. What have no? These have been these talukas have been added or given to uh, Vijayanagaram from Vishakapatnam and Chipurpal, Bobbili, Paratipuram, Saluru, Kurpam, and Chipurpalli talukas have been added to uh, Vijayanagaram from Shrikakulam district. So only three three talukas have been added to Vijayanagaram from Vishakapatnam district and one to Bobbili, Paratipuram. Saluru, Kurpam and Chipripalli have been, five, uh, five talukas have been uh, added from Shrikakulam to Vijayanagaram district. So in December 1979, three more talukas were added by creating Nellimarla, uh, Viyam Peta and Badangi, duly bifurcating the talukas of Vijayanagaram. Srungarupu Kota, Bobbili respectively making the total talukas to 12 and these talukas have been further subdivided into 20 firkas. So again further, uh, when it was started, it had 9 talukas. But in 19, again in 1979 in December, it, uh, some uh, talukas have been divided and bifurcated again and they made into 12 talukas. So totally how many talukas it has? 12. They again they are subdivided into uh, 52 firk. So what are the natural resources? This is the boundaries and talukas of Vijayanagaram. What are the natural resources? Uh, what kind of minerals it do contain rivers or forest tri type, forestry type. So the district can be divided into two distinct natural phys uh, physical divisions that is plain and hilly regions. Relief features, relief of Vijayanagaram can be divided or topography, topography of Vijayanagaram can be divided into two, mainly that is one hilly region, another one is plain. So the hilly region is mostly covered with densely forests, wooded forests and comes under agency tract of the district. Again these uh, hilly regions are been covered with densely wooden, uh, wooded forests which are called as agency areas. Even Shigakulam also has hilly region is called as agency and even uh, Vijayanagaram hilly region is, is, called, is also called as agency areas. Elevation is also called so district. Since it is hilly tract, uh, hilly tract its elevation is also uneven. Obviously hilly means elevation will be up and down or uh, like many uh, ups and downs or uh, troughs and cuss. So the plain portion of district is a well cultivated tract. 
the apart from agency another uh, topography or relief feature of vijayanagaram is plain so being it's a plain one it is a well irrigated or well cultivated tract the areas transferred from visakhapatnam district are morely uh, mostly hilly and picture uh, pictures one especially in the north as we have seen the parts which have been uh, taken out uh, from visakhapatnam have been added to uh, uh, vijayanagaram though they consist of mostly hilly areas hilly areas they have the picturesque beauty or uh, like you can uh, escorta uh, these all come under hilly tracts so shikaku the parts which have been carved from shikakulam mostly mainly are plain ones the agency tract mostly consists of the hilly regions covered by the eastern ghats which run parallel to the coast from the northeast to the southwest as a, a eastern ghats run all over the andhra pradesh from shrikakulam to nellore so even in vijayanagaram also we can see uh, eastern ghats running parallel to vijayanagaram district from northeast to southwest the highest peak is the shankaram in srungavarapu kota that is all it is also called as s kota kottavalsa s kota l kota mandal which is over 1615 meters so the highest peak in uh, uh, western ghats of vijayanagaram district is shankaram peak shankaram peak in s kota taluka which is 1615 meters high from the sea level in the areas transferred from shikakulam district the hilly region consists parts of the former parvatipuram saluru talukas and they are also known as agency tracks even the areas even the areas which have been transferred from shikakulam not only the areas which have been transferred from visakhapatnam to uh, uh, vijayanagaram or hilly or agency areas even the areas which have been transferred from shikakulam to vijayanagaram uh, or also hilly agency areas so the main hill ranges are dumakonda antikonda palakonda kolagandi and gamatikonda so the peaks uh, which have been transferred from shikakulam district to vijayanagaram district are dumakonda antikonda palakonda kolagandi and gamatikonda so uh, vijayanagaram those are the territorial or topographical features of vijayanagaram or the peaks highest peaks in uh, eastern ghats of the vijayanagaram district so next coming to drainage system how many rivers are being drained vijayanagaram is being drained by how many rivers or what is the drainage system how many rivers it does flow from this district so the district is drained by the rivers of nagavali gosthani suvarnamukhi champavati vegavati gomukhi which passes through plain and hilly regions these all are also even drain shikakulam district and they further travel to vijayanagaram they are uh, nagavali gosthani suvarnamukhi champavati vegavati gomukhi which passes through both plain and hilly regions of the district next coming to the flora type flora so the district receives rainfall we know that uh, we all get rain from monsoons only so the district receives rains from both the monsoons and the climate is tropical apart from monsoonal rain even the district receives tropical rains because climate is tropical ones so the forest exhibit a variety of local changes in quality composition density depending upon the soil moisture climate altitude slope and distance from the sea here we get a different type of uh, fauna or the the forest type it, we do have a very type of forest here very type of flora because of the different types of climate it has both plain and forest type of climate depending upon that and the Uh, monsoonal rain and tropical rain it receives both monsoonal rain and tropical rain that's the reason altitude depending upon the altitude climate and soil type and the distance from the sea varieties of flora can be or forest can be seen 
The forest types found in the district are Southern Tropical Moist Mixed Deciduous Forest. Southern, first one is Southern type. Southern Tropical Moist Deciduous means, Tropical Moist means almost uh, wetty, wetty forest. We can say wetty forest. Next one is Northern Tropical Dry Deciduous Forest. Dry Deciduous Forest. A kind of Northern type means uh, salt trees. We can see a type of desert kind of trees. Next, Southern Tropical Dry. This is Mixed Deciduous Forest. Both. It has both type of Mixed Deciduous. It has uh, Deciduous and Mixed Deciduous. Next one is Dry Deciduous Green Forest and Fry. Fifth one is Dry Evergreen Forest. Dry Evergreen Forest. So, it has all types of forest which are found in the all over India. It has all types of forest qualities like southern dry deciduous, wet deciduous, tropical dry deciduous, everything. So now coming to that uh, that is flora and coming to fauna. So fauna in the district is fairly high in the interior hill regions but it is heavily threatened with extinction. Fauna means uh, animal life. Animal life, animal uh, types of animals or wildlife found in that particular district. So, uh, almost all these animals or fauna are to be seen in only the in the interiors of the district. But because of uh, lumbering or uh, like uh, hunting, these are getting extincted. These are getting extincted. The reasons for the depletion uh, are mainly due to the shrinkage of habitat and uncontrollable poaching, obviously. Because of uncontrollable poaching and uncontrolled shrinkage of habitat and uncontrollable. So, poaching means what? Hunting. Um, people do hunt for, for many reasons. Because of that, fauna is to be, is getting extinct. The principal animals and birds found from along the sea coast to the high plateau or what are the types of uh, fauna uh, found in uh, varieties of fauna found in Vijayanagaram district are yellow bat, sloth bear, wild buffaloes, fox, hare hyena, jackal, mongoose, and birds of blue rock pigeon, house crow, house sparrow, and common mina, etc. These are for, these are the main types of uh, fauna in Vijayanagaram district. Consequent on the enactment of the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972, it is hoped that the wildlife would improve and attain the pastoral glory. So, hope so it may uh, uh, improve depending upon the, again they carry this pastoral glory, glory because of this Wildlife Protection Act 1972. Next coming to after uh, wild, uh, type, uh, wildlife type, coming to climate. What kind of climate? this particular district do have. So, the climate of the district is characterized by high humidity. Obviously, it is near to the uh, sea and high humidity with sweaty nature. Sweaty nature. So, all the year round with oppressive summer and good seasonal rainfall. Rainfall is good in the seasons, but all around the uh, year, it is almost uh, hot hot and wetty. Apart from uh, dry seasons like December, November and Jan, other seasons almost it is humid, humid in nature. The summer seasons is from March to the middle of the June. Summer season is from March to the middle of the June. This is followed by the southwest monsoon season which lasts up to about the second week of October. Uh, as uh, even um, Southwest and when enters in India, even this district also experiences southwest monsoons from the second week of June and last uh, till October, second week of October. The period from mid-October to the end of November constitutes the uh, uh, post-monsoon or retreating monsoon season. Obviously, when the monsoon retreats, retreating monsoon from November, like post-October to November, this even experiences the same post-monsoon climate. 
December to February is the season of generally fine weather. December to Feb. That is a uh, season where climates are happy and enjoyable. Apart from that, if you visit this district, so almost you see sweaty, humid, hot climates. So the climate of the hill parts of the district is different than that of the plains. One thing to be noted. Climate of hills is different than the plains. Since hilly regions receive heavier rainfall, they are cooler than the plains. As they receive more rainfall, as being the agency areas, they are more, more cooler than the plain areas like uh, Vijayanagaram town or Gajapati Nagaram or uh, uh, S Kota, L Kota. The maximum temperature will be recorded during May and the minimum temperature will be during December. So maximum means the, uh, the hottest season is in the May and the some of the best season in the month of December. So next coming to after climate, coming to temperatures, how temperature fluctuates in this district. In the interiors, low level area of the district, the temperature in summer are about 2 to 3 degrees higher than in the coastal region. Coastal regions will have uh, less temperatures compared to the hinterland. Hinterland means, suppose this is, this is sea and this is a place or this is a land. This area is called coastal area. In this area, this is bordered with another piece of land or another territory. So, this part is called hinterland. So, temperatures uh, will be higher in hinterland, 20 degrees higher in hinterland than the coastal areas. So, okay, in the hilly tracks, the temperature is generally maybe lower than in the coastal regions by about a couple of degrees or so depending upon elevations. Even in the hilly tracks, see if this is the, here temperatures are lower than this part of the district. And if you are somewhere here, then temperatures are more lower than these coastal areas depending upon the elevation. If this is more in height, the temperature is more low than the coastal regions. From about the middle of February, the temperature rise rapidly till May, which is the hottest month with the mean daily maximum temperature at about 35 degrees. This is degrees about 35 degrees and the mean uh, minimum at 27 degrees. So, maximum we can say is 35 degrees and mean is 27 degrees. Uh, in the coastal regions, the weather is so oppressive, oppressive in the sense, it's so sweaty, sultry, I mean so sticky. Uh, comparatively generally high even the heat it is a heat a hot season adding to that you can also feel humid nature humid means sultry sultry or sticky weathers thunder showers and sea breezes in the afternoons bring some relief from the heat in the coastal regions so in summer uh, like some thunders or cool breezes bring some water relief for this sweaty or sticky climate this is the temperature of the district, Vijayanagaram district. Coming to soils, what kind of soils it, this district to have? So that, depending upon that, what type of cultivation is being done? What kind of agriculture is being practiced out there? So the main soils of the district are red soils, sandy loams, and sandy clay and they constitute 96% of the total area. 96% of the uh, soils in the district are red clay, red soil, sandy loam and sandy clay. So the soils in the district are predominantly loamy with medium fertility. Fertility is medium level. It, it says that extra like uh, fertilizers has to be added for cultivation of the crops. 
because fertility ranges only medium level. There are mostly red loamy soils as far as dry lands as concerned in clay loamy in case of wetlands. The soils at some places are thick as 4 meters thickness. Next, it is likely that the thick soil cover might represent alluvium along the valleys. Along the valleys, different types of rocks are in abundance in the district. As we know, why a soil is thick means because of the aluminum consistence of aluminum. Because if it is a valley area, obviously if there is a hill means uh, like bottom of the hill will be a valley. A area between two hills is called a valley. So here we can find a fertile uh, fertile soils. This district is abundant abundant in uh, types of different types of rocks. So what are the this is a soil type of this district mostly uh, red loamy sorry red soil clay loamy sand loamy and sand clay. So what are the irrigational projects or irrigational facilities in this district. There are so many irrigational projects in Vijayanagaram district. They are Tadipudi Reservoir. Tadipudi Reservoir. It even, this is for, uh, it serves like for the purpose of irrigation of uh, uh, farms, of fields, even for drinking purpose also. Drinking purpose to the cities of Vijayanagaram and in some other parts of Vijayanagaram and parts of, in, to the uh, city of Vishakapatnam. City of Vijayakapatnam even receives drinking water from Tadipudi Reservoir. This is on Gosthani River. Gosthani River. Gosthani River was born in Arku. Again, Arku Bora Caves, near Bora Caves. So, next one is Vegavati Project. Vegavati Project, Vattigadda Project, and Nagavali Left and Right Channels. Left and Right Canals. That is also called as Totapalli, now renamed as Gautu Lachanna. It has been renamed as Gautu Lachanna project. So, Gautu Lachanna project is on which river? Nagavali river. Uh, earlier it used to be called as Totapalli reservoir. Now, Gautu Lachanna reservoir. Next one is uh, Pedanankala Manikat. Next is Sita Nagara Manikat uh, and Dankara Anikat. And the most famous Janjavati Reservoir. Janjavati Reservoir. It's the first rubber dam. First rubber dam in India. Built in India. Built on Janjavati River. First rubber dam in the country, uh, it uh, built on Janjavati River. It is in Vijayanagaram district. So next is Paradi Anikat, Surapadu Anikat, Vengal Raya Sagar project, and Andhra project and Champavati River are the medium irrigation projects in the district. Uh, they uh, irrigate these irrigation projects irrigate about forty-three thousand nine hundred eight. 84 hectares in the district. How much of a, how many of hectares has been been irrigated by these uh, projects, medium irrigation projects? That is 43,984 hectares of land is being irrigated. So the Nagawal is the main river which flows in about 112 kilometers in Vijayanagaram. So one of the biggest rivers of Vijayanagaram is Nagavali because it almost travels nearly 112 kilometers. So district covering an eye cut of how much? 2832 hectares. How much? 2832 hectares. The next one is the river Gosthani as it uh, has its origin in Anantagiri forest. That is Anantagiri forest means Arku, Burra Arku, uh, Burra Arku caves area and flows through Eskota and Jami Mandalams. So uh, it originates in Arku near Arku it, but it flows through Eskota and Jami Mandals of Vijayanagaram district. Next, Subarnamukhi River takes its birth in the hills of Saluru Mandals and takes an 
east in direction and finally joins the Naga Valley at Sangam village in Palakunda Mandal of Shrikakulam. So, Suvarnamukhi is originated in Saluru Mandalam, but it joins Nagavali in Palakona district and they merges with river Nagavali. Next, Vegavati originates in Pachipenta hill of Pachipenta Mandals and almost parallel to Suvarnamukhi covering an eye cut of 2428 acres, hectares. Where how much? 2480. So, these are the uh, river sources or drainage sources or irrigation sources of Vijayanagaram district. Next coming to agriculture resources. So uh, what types of uh, food grains or crops have been uh, cultivated there? So how much dependency on agriculture? Let's see. So Vijayanagaram district is predominantly an agricultural district as 60 agrarian district. Almost all the districts uh, of AP, uh, apart from one or two, are agrarian districts. So, even Shrikakulam is also agrarian district and Vijayanagaram is also an agrarian district. Predominantly, means major portion of the people are in agriculture. Their, uh, their livelihood comes from agriculture, directly or indirectly. So, Vijayanagaram district is predominant in agricultural district as 68.4 percent. 68, nearly you can say 70 percent of the people, workers are engaged in agriculture and about 82 percent of the population of the district is living in rural areas and depend on agriculture for their livelihood. For their livelihood. So, 82% of the population depend uh, or live, lives in rural areas, they depend on agriculture. Uh, that means 68% of the people uh, are engaged in agriculture directly or indirectly. So, rain-fed farming is a characteristic of agriculture in the district as about 80% of its area is cultivated purely under rain-fed conditions. Again, this district, agriculture in Vijayanagaram district is also rain dependent. It is also rain dependent. I mean, monsoon will dependent. So, how much? 80% of area is cultivated purely under rain fed conditions. Even apart from these irrigational projects or irrigational facilities, but 80% farmers uh, depends on, depend on rain for their agriculture or farming. So, even the rest of the area which is termed as irrigated area is mostly depend on the rainfall received in the district. Even the uh, other parts like which are being irrigated are also depend on the rain. If rains are less, uh, the volume of the uh, uh, water is decreased. If rains are more, uh, more means irrigation volume of the water it will be will increase and irrigation is being done to more and more hectares of land. In view of the unassured irrigation conditions in the district, majority of crops grown are dry crops. Depending upon the, this district is also a gambling of, uh, agriculture in even Vijayanagaram is a gambling of monsoons. So, they almost cultivate dry crops, which need less amount of water, which need less amount of water, if even there are no sufficient rainfalls in that particular year also, they can survive. So, like dry crops. Paddy crop is irrigational, uh, is irrigation conditions in the district. Majority of crops grown are dry crops. Paddy depends, paddy crop is grown, but depending upon the irrigation facilities available in and around. So, pa even paddy is also grown, but depending upon the irrigation facilities available in and around, but most major of the crops are dry crops. Major of the crops are dry crops only. So, paddy crop is cultivated mainly during Kharif season with 80% of its area under tank fed conditions, which is turn dependent on local rainfall. Again, Paddy is grown only in the season of Kharif. Again, they depend on tank for the uh, irrigation. Means they store safe waters in the rainy season 
rainy season local rainfalls they use this tank uh, tank uh, water uh, irrigation facilities for their uh, paddy crops in kharif season paddy is grown also but it has many conditions involved in it so the major crops in the district are paddy ragi bajra sugarcane pulses mesta cotton maize uh, korean chillies seasonal tobacco and groundnuts almost apart from paddy almost other uh, uh, crops are uh, dry crops only the average yields obtained obtain in the district are low due to the erratic rainfall generally received in the district so the average yields yields means harvest is generally low comparatively other districts of andhra pradesh because of erratic means uh, very uh, low or uh, very seasonal rainfalls in the district of vijayanagara so that is the agriculture type and types of crops are grown in this district now coming to livestock resources livestock resources means cattle animals so the livestock maintained by the inhabitants are non descriptive type in majority mostly less productive they are non descriptive and less productive it means that there is nothing much to talk about that talk about the livestock grown in this particular district like uh, cows or buffaloes or uh, like pigs or poultry so but they are even less productive also not even that much productive so nothing much to talk about the livestock grown in livestock in this uh, area so cross breeding program was taken up in the district so government has taken a uh, cross breeding program so that productivity like um, uh, milching like milk uh, uh, from the particular breeds to increase the productivity of the particular breeds next the sheep in the district are non descriptive type which wild pigs belong to zenu zenu type so sheep uh, different varieties of sheep are grown uh, there is no particular uh, breed like only this kind of breed uh, of sheep is grown like that but Uh, coming to pigs coming to pigs zenu types of pigs are grown which types zenu types of pigs are grown in vijayanagaram district thank you